Good evening, my name is Kacper Paradowski and you're watching Poland Daily News. Today was the last day of the election campaign. The election silence will start at midnight. The Polish parliamentary elections will take place on Sunday and will be held from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Every survey conducted to this day indicates that the Law and Justice Party is going to win. The last day of the election campaigns is a very intensive time. The leaders of all the political parties take part in the meetings with the voters. Today, Małgorzata Kidawa Bońska was trying to convince the public that the Civic Coalition has a big chance to win the elections. I truly believe that we can win these elections. We worked really hard today. Anything can happen. The final convention of the Civic Coalition was held in the city of Łódź. The leader of the Law and Justice Party took part in three conventions, the last of which was held in Stalowa Wola. If the voters trust us again, we will continue the social politics on the one hand, and on the other we want to fight for higher salaries. That's why since January the minimum salary will amount to 2,600 złoty, a year later 3,000 złoty, and in three years 4,000 złoty. So, shortly speaking, this not only leads to higher minimum salaries, but to higher salaries in general. The leader of the Polish People's Party, Władysław Kosiniak-Kamysz, met with the inhabitants of Warsaw and the Lubelski region. Poland deserves to have the best leader. We have to build bridges of understanding and not hatred. That's what Poland deserves. According to today's survey conducted by Ibris for the Rzeczpospolita newspaper, 41% of voters want to support the Law and Justice Party. The Civic Coalition would get 22%, the left wing 13%, the Polish People's Party together with the Kukis 15 Movement 6% and the Confederation 4%. The president of Poland Andrzej Duda encouraged Poles to vote. I want to encourage everyone to use one of your most important rights, the right to vote. So far, the greatest voter turnout has been noted in the elections of 1989. Nearly 63 percent of the voters voted in the first round. A court case between investigative journalist Mariusz Zielke and musician Krzysztof Sadowski is taking place. The journalist accused Sadowski of sexual abuse of minors. The musician denies these claims. The journalist revealed on social media that by a decision of the district court in Warsaw, he was forbidden to post information on the charges against Sadowski for a year. The motion was lodged by Krzysztof Sadowski. The order of the court is a preventive measure action. The musician also demanded that the journalist remove from the internet what he had written about him so far, but the court did not accede to that part of the motion. I was given a court order to cease the dissemination of information about Krzysztof Sadowski regarding molestation and rape of minors. At the same time, the court did not order me to remove the published material. There will be a trial. I will be able to prove that. It will be a unique judgment. In the statement sent to the WP.pl portal, Sadowski referred to the accusations and denied the alleged abuse. All the allegations made against me are based on the slander of one person whose personal details I will not disclose, as I am not trying to hurt them. My family and I have known this person for over 20 years, and for most of this time we were very close. Unfortunately, last year this person asked me for a large sum of money to help that person rearrange their life. Not being able to comply with this request, but also having a sense of abuse of our friendship, I refused. At the time, that was in June of last year, that person broke off contact with us and sent me a motion of the suspected crime. Regional prosecution of the Warsaw Synod District has been conducting the investigation against a rape case from 1997-1999 of two adolescents under the age of 15. Moving on to news from the world. The Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Abiy Amen, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. The Ethiopian politician was granted the award for beginning the process of bringing peace between his country and Eritrea. As without Ethiopian Ertran, when there is peace between the Ethiopian and Eritrean people, the Horn of Africa region will become a region of peace and development. Our people who live scattered as refugees and humiliation will come back with dignity. Our citizens will not be sold and exchanged like commodities. He believes that we are all one, all Ethiopians are one, and unless we are all brought together and we have that mentality that we all want the same thing in our country, we cannot bring the change that we want. And he has that mentality, that positivity, that mindset that says nobody is left out and that we are all as one. The conflict between Ethiopia and Eritrea began in 1962 when the latter was conquered by Ethiopia and transformed into a province. Then, in 1993, Eritrea managed to 
regain independence, acknowledged by Ethiopia at first, but only five years later, war broke out anew, taking the lives of approximately 70,000 people. A peace agreement was reached in the year 2000, but its conditions weren't met until 2018. Eritrea is still called the North Korea of Africa, but Ethiopia is set to change the situation, since the country itself is starting to abandon the totalitarian system. An Iranian tanker exploded in the Red Sea, so the authorities suspect this is a terrorist attack. However, Iranian officials are denying these allegations. The explosion and fire took place on Friday on an Iranian tanker off the coast of Saudi Arabia in the Red Sea. According to the Iranian oil company, National Iranian Tanker Company, the tanker was struck by two rockets from the Saudi coast. The crew is safe and the situation is under control, according to reports of the Iranian media. For the time being, the Saudi authorities have not spoken about the incident. According to Saudi sources, all is escaping from the damaged tanker into the Red Sea. The Iranian news agency, INRA denied these reports. According to Iranians, the oil spill has been contained. This is yet another incident involving tankers in the Red Sea and Gulf region. The Red Sea is a strategic global shipping route connecting the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea through the Suez Canal. Shortly after the explosion, the price of Brent oil rose to $60.5 per barrel and the price of the American West Texas Intermediate Oil to almost $55 per barrel. That is all for tonight. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for Poland Daily Business. Good night. Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily Weather. The forecast for tonight calls for showers in the north in the cities of Szczecin, Gdańsk and Olsztyn. The rest of the country can expect cloudy and partly cloudy skies. The temperatures will vary from 9 degrees in the east to up to 14 degrees in the west. The forecast for tomorrow will bring showers to the city of Koszalin. We can expect cloudy skies in Gdańsk, Olsztyn, Bydgoszcz and Białystok. The rest of the country can expect partly cloudy skies. The temperatures will vary between 15 to 22 degrees. The next three days will bring warmer weather to Poland. We can expect a lovely day on Sunday. On Monday, clear skies will greet the central regions of Poland, and we will be able to expect temperatures as high as 21 degrees. That is all for now. I thank you for joining us, and I wish you all a very pleasant evening. Watching Poland Daily Business Edition, and tonight we will talk a little bit more about Syria. That is again on the headlines uh, of the news outlets across the world. Our correspondent in Lebanon, uh, in Beirut, Lebanon, is Paweł Rakowski. Paweł, welcome to the show, and please tell us what the uh, local press is saying about the incursion of Turkey to the northern Syria. Uh, well, uh, Lebanese, as well as uh, most of the Arab world, is uh, condemning the um, last night in the uh, Turkey invasion to uh, northern Syria. Uh, they they say that uh, it's, um, it's uh, it, it causes, of course, great humanitarian but also political risk. Uh, we can't forget that uh, the Turkish uh, organizations were uh, on the on the headpost of the fighting against Daesh against uh, the ISIS. And now getting them, we can can uh, can can make the uh, the Salafite organization uh, much stronger again. Uh, of course, there is um, uh, there is kind of the idea that um, uh, all of the Arab world, which is commenting that, and, and even Israel, that uh, abandoning Turk uh, Kurdish by, uh, by by the United States support, uh, it's 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 a, it, it creates new uh, political reality in the region. Um, uh, can are, are the Arab countries like the Gulf states can uh, can trust the Washington or Israel can uh, can 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 trust and uh, keep their security in the American hands? It's 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 uh, very doubtful in the future. Nevertheless, uh, still uh, still we have the news that uh, they are heavy clashes on the on the on the on the on the border. Uh, that the uh, Turkish army uh, in, 
as well as their um, Syrian um, uh, allies from the Free Syrian Army, or uh, however it's called nowadays, uh, are in the um, are clashing with in, inside the Syria with the, uh, with the with the Kurdish inside the um, uh, Kurdish towns and villages. Uh, they are heavy casualties right now, and uh, uh, the future seems to be um, uh, more unstable. Uh, especially that um, we, we can see that uh, Kurdish now. From Syria are um, looking on the, towards Damascus, towards Bashar al-Assad, who can uh, really uh, help them and support them supplies. Well, because this is obvious uh, uh, question, because we are witnessing now the incursion of the armed forces of one country into the borders of another country. Yeah. So that is a violation of the international border. How Turkey is explaining that? Well, uh, President Erdogan says that it's an operation called the uh, Peace of uh, um, Spring, yes. And um, of course, it, it, it's a very poetical name. And nevertheless, uh, the, the, the Turkish plans are uh, well known. Uh, could, uh, Erd President Erdogan wants to uh, make the security zone inside the, um, the Syrian Kurdistan. He, he, he's planning to uh, replace there uh, several millions there estimates that there are two or three million uh, Arab um, Syrians refugees uh, which are in, uh, in Turkey and uh, this is the uh, way kind of to um, reduce the Kurdish tension. Of course, Kurds, of course, they don't want to, uh, to take those uh, uh, immigrants, especially that they will change the demographics of the, of the region and uh, uh, President Erdogan wants to uh, this way wants to uh, kind of uh, to solve uh, solve its uh, the, the, the biggest political um, nightmare, uh, which is uh, kind of the free uh, Syrians, uh, free Kurdish um, uh, military groups and political activists uh, who are in the um, on, on his borders. As we know, that um, uh, large large part of the today Turkey it's uh, um, uh, Kurdish regions which uh, they struggle to to have any independence or at least have autonomy. So we will see if the Turkish plans will succeed. Uh, the replacement of the uh, national uh, mix in the northern Turkey in favor of Arabs. Uh, we should remember that uh, Kurdish population are Indo-Europeans and speak one of the Indo-European languages as well as Iranians, for example. The Persian is very much Indo-European language. The question now is, what is the position of official government of Syria, Assad? One American president wanted to uh, abolish and uh, unsettle uh, Assad. It failed with help of uh, Vladimir Putin. Yet uh, we have another American president who wants to help Turkey. Does, does it make any sense from your point of view? Well, um, it doesn't, but uh, but still, if we if we don't see any sense, it, it doesn't mean that it, uh, that it isn't uh, any interest there. Uh, of course, um, uh, there is um, uh, the, there are kind of the problems between Syria and Turkey. It's like way beyond uh, the Kurdish um, area, as as we know from the history. Um, uh, the Assad regime was also the one who uh, oppressed to, uh, Kurds uh, very very heavily in the um, not even long ago history. Uh, so, uh, of course, um, kind of the uh, regime now, uh, the Assad regime now looks um, in favor of the Kurds, uh, first of all, because the Kurdish areas are on the very strate strategical um, flank. They are on the, near the Euphrates um, River. As we know, the in the Middle East, the water is the most important uh, resource. Uh, the, on the other hand, um, in Syria, everyone remembers that uh, part of the uh, Hatay region, uh, which is um, uh, now in Turkey, it was given by the French in 1939, uh, towards uh, towards uh, Turkey uh, without any uh, even explanation, it was just a sedition of the uh, of the of the of the, of the uh, country which uh, which Syrians uh, uh, claims there. So um, so definitely uh, the Assad, it's, uh, the Daesh regime, uh, is is gaining a, its po political points from it. Um, and it will gain uh, political points, as well as Russia, because uh, in the Middle Eastern politics, um, loyalty is um, very important. I mean, we, we, we can't remember, we can forget that in the Middle East there is uh, 
and there is no democracy in its uh, understanding. It is more like patriarchal, patriarchal uh, sedition, and um, uh, loyalty. It's a part of the part of the big long scale um, uh, political culture, and lack of this loyalty will be uh, will be uh, will be remembered uh, for the generations. Pavel Rakowski, thank you very much from. Uh, Beirut, Lebanon reporting for Poland Daily Business. And that was it for tonight. Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily Weather. The forecast for tonight calls for showers in the north in the cities of Szczecin, Gdańsk and Olsztyn. The rest of the country can expect cloudy and partly cloudy skies. The temperatures will vary from 9 degrees in the east to up to 14 degrees in the west. The forecast for tomorrow will bring showers to the city of Koszalin. We can expect cloudy skies in Gdańsk, Olsztyn, Bydgoszcz and Białystok. The rest of the country can expect partly cloudy skies. The temperatures will vary between 15 to 22 degrees. The next three days will bring warmer weather to Poland. We can expect a lovely day on Sunday. On Monday, clear skies will greet the central regions of Poland, and we will be able to expect temperatures as high as 21 degrees. That is all for now. I thank you for joining us, and I wish you all a very pleasant evening. Good day, everyone. My name is Maria Kondzielska, and this is Poland Daily Culture. Are you interested in theater? Our today's guests know everything about it. He is a director, drama writer, an essayist, and a music composer. He won two prestige drama prizes, and to add more, he's not even 30 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, Michał Zdunik, thank you for coming. Thank you for the invitation. But before we learn more about him, Let's see some shots of his plays. Telewizor się włączył! się włączył! To samo tak gra? Samo? Jakieś obce widma. Odworują z nas sobie. Ten człowiek nie może zasiąść z nami przy stole. Mój ojciec go zabije. Już raz to zrobił. Milcz! Oktawian Alfons był człowiekiem czynów. Rozumiesz? Wielkich czynów! Nie bieg się, a co na mnie. Nie wiesz bowiem o swoim ojcu potworzy rzeczy najstraszliwsze. Michał, you are a young Polish director and uh, you finish also uh, theater Academy mm -hmm. in Warsaw. So you are kind of in the mainstream or you know a lot about what's going on in theater right now. How do you judge uh, the condition of Polish theater? What is the main topic which, which uh, is revolving in our theaters and in minds of our directors? It's hard to say about my colleague and to make uh, an, uh, an opinions, yes, or, or make a judgment. Of, of their work, but I can say that the main topic is very important, is the kind of topic of history, yes? It's kind of, of reinterpretation, in, in, in critical reinterpretation of, of our history, yes? When we can, uh, uh, the, the Polish directors tell the story which, uh, which wasn't, which weren't uh, tell by the years, yes? It, it, it find, and kind of uh, reinterpret, uh, historical reinterpretation is one, one of the most important topics in, in Polish theatre now. And so this history is back in our minds and we want to rethink it in a yes, different yes. way. And uh, in history we can see only, uh, in this history we can see also uh, very interesting things about our identity, yes, about our national I identity. So, so it's also very important to, uh, to theatre directors now, I think. Is it hard to be a young director? <laughs> no, I think Is it like do you struggle? Do you have moments when you say, "Oh shit, I should have go to to law or to medicine and just give up all of this art"? No, because I love that 
the thing that I uh, I do, yes, and it's I don't have um, hesitations, yes, uh, or that I uh, I can do something else. No, I I, I make something that I love, so I don't. I you don't have that, and you want to give it up. But course. what uh, advice would you give to all the young people, who, for example, are interested in going to the faculty of direction and at the Academia Warsaw Academia? I think that the main advice uh, will be that they must go to the theater. <laughs> they must watch uh, another plays by another masters, yes, because uh, the watching of another place is kind of learning, yes? We can see another techniques, another kind of work, we can see topics, we can see great, great literature on stage. So I think that the theater is the best, uh, the best teacher, yes? Theater place is the best teacher for, for people who wants, uh, who wants to be a director. Is it, a, is it a demand in our society for, for theater, for such kind of work? Do you feel that uh, Poles care about theater, or is it a moment when, uh, when people go only to when there is a limited audience for such kind of art? I think that uh, theater uh, always uh, will be kind of uh, elitarius or uh, kind of uh, art for uh, for, for elite for for, for elite, a little for, a small group. for, uh, for the people. Uh, for the kind of organizzazione for uh, limited for for, sorry, for limited group of people and I think it's normal yes because uh, when we asked also the, the the great literature I think I don't know Thomas Mann or or or, or Vespiansky or uh, James Joyce is only kind of art for limited group of people and it's fine it's it's normal in every society that uh, there, there are no uh, great, uh, great audience, mass audience for the theater, yes? I think it's, it's very hard to, to theater now when we have YouTube, when we have Netflix, when we have another social media, which is easier than theater, yes, because there are, uh, it's, it's very hard to, to make uh, audience for theater. But only in theater we have contact with living people, yes? Not in cinema, not in uh, Netflix, not in YouTube. Only, if, only theater is kind of uh, life meeting, yes? So what would you give, what would you say f to our audience as an encouragement to go and see, to go to a theatre and see the place? And which other place right now do you recommend the most? I recommend a play uh, of director who, I don't know him by, 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 pers uh, by, by, sorry, by person, he, he died, uh, I don't know, 13 years ago. His name is Jerzy Grzegorzewski and he made a play called Duszyczka, Little Soul, by Tadeusz Rzewicz in the National Theatre uh, in Poland. And it's kind of very poetic, very metaphorical play. And uh, even if, if, if uh, someone doesn't uh, <coughs> understand a Polish text, he will be very... Uh, he, <coughs> he will love the kind of set design, kind of music, kind of metaphor. So I will. This was. It. It would be my advice. It, it is in national theater. It is in, it's in national theater. Yes. Yeah. And the words of encouragement: Why to go to theater at all, and not stay at home and watch Netflix? I think that the theater is kind of uh, talk. Yes. And uh, to, and when we when we see when we go to the theater, we will be a better people. Yes, More, we will be most tolerant. We will be most open to to to, to another. Yes, I think this is the most uh, encouragement for theater. Theater makes us better people, says Michał Zdunik, and I think is a great punchline. And thank you for watching Berlin Daily Culture. Eighteen thirty was a year of revolution in Europe. Belgium, France, Switzerland, and in Greece, the struggle to independence from the Ottoman Empire was finally successful. And in this dramatic year, Poland was no exception. 
In this programme, we look at the November 1830 revolution, which gave the Poles nine months of freedom, of independence, the only nine months they had between the third partition of Poland in 1795 and the re-emergence of the Polish state after the First World War in 1918. Join us on Poland Daily History for this dramatic story. But there were some attempts, I think, were there not, to, for, the, for the administrative council as, as sort of reconfigured to take into account this revolution, still to negotiate, to negotiate with, with the Russians. Uh, because I think... Uh, that was very important, because yes. they, they, they sent, they sent uh, a representation uh, to the Tsar uh, in order to get to know what, what is the Russian, you know, opinion of all of this. Because I think, some, I think some felt that actually taking on the Russians was a bad move in any event. It could only end in tears. Uh, but when the Tsar said, uh, um, I'll try to say it in Russian, I won't talk to the uh, rebels. And then when they, the, the, the Polish representation came back and said that, that was Poland. it. That, I mean, that was it. And they, they, they passed a resolution deposing Nicholas as king of Poland. Of course, that is that is uh, probably the most important political act in Poland uh, in 19th century. Uh, the Polish Sejm deposes the Tsar on the 25th of January 1831, uh, and the declaration says there is no more. Nicholas. Yes. Nicholas is not there. And this, this and I think it's probably worth mentioning. This resolution was actually passed in the Royal Castle, I think. Yes. In, in the same room where in 1791 the 3rd of May Constitution had also been, had also been enacted. So there's a sort of parallel there, mm -hmm. and again, a, a new, a new at the time, a, a sort of new constitutional arrangement for Poland, or so they hoped. But of course, by deposing the Tsar, this was actually essentially a, a declaration of war against Th Russia. That was that was exactly. I mean, nothing more, nothing less. I mean. Uh, that was it. Uh, so, uh, so, so the, the, the so, so the bridge uh, got burned uh, uh, behind, uh, you know, uh, the poles. Um, uh, so, so it was. And of course, what happened? What happens next is uh, that the Russians sent an army uh, here. Quite to a Poland. large army, one hundred fifteen thousand, I think, something like that. Quite big. Some say that even two hundred thousand people. But the thing, and this is, uh, and this is really uh, impressive, that uh, um, when you t when you when we t uh, take a look at the figures, I mean, Russia was at that time a country of 30 million men, right, and they sent an army of 200,000. Poland was, Poland had four, four million, was a four million, you know, population, so ten times less, um, uh, and we could produce an army. Of 100,000, so it, it, it was, in, it was a very impressive, immense, immense and, effort. Yeah, and can we just say, I mean, and of course, some of the individuals involved, like like uh, Prince Adam Czartoryski, of course, Czartoryski had been during the Napoleonic uh, period quite close to the Russians. I mean, how did, and he became quite a key figure in the government at that time. Mm. The, the, the point is that um, uh, Czartoryski got disappointed. I mean, he he was uh, in his uh, um, earlier days. He was a friend even to um, to, to, to to Tsar, uh, but uh, and he was planning uh, to, to to make a, a certain marriage of Poland and Russia in order to civilize Russia. It was a very very um, ambitious program. Uh, but it didn't work out, and uh, Czartoryski, who was an extremely intelligent guy, I mean, uh, uh, spotted that. Uh, and, uh, and when the situation was, and, and besides, I mean, he was a, he was a great Polish patriot. And when they when the um, when the same offered him uh, the role of uh, 
um, the chairman uh, or the prime minister, let's say, I mean, the chairman of the national um, government, because it was called like this, the national That's government. Right, yes. I mean, he took the he took the office. He did, but because even even at that stage, there were still some more radical elements. I think at one point. He, they, he felt that the, the old guard, which was sort of keen to, or had been keen the to... The government was composed. It yes. was, was a certain um, compromise. I mean, there were uh, people from the left, like Le Level, for example, uh, um, uh, and people uh, uh, close to um, Adam Jerzy, more conservative, and, uh, and also uh, a tiny part, which was the centre, let's say. And so you always have this tension. And then, of course, we have the first, I think, the first major... Uh, military encounter, which was at the Battle of of Sochev. Of Stochek. Stochek, Stochek. yes. Mm -hmm. um, the first, that, yeah, that was the first battle, a uh, skirmish, better to say, maybe, a, a major battle. Yeah. But it was very important from the uh, psychological point of view. And who, who was leading the, the Polish forces at that time? Mm, the General Dwernicki. He was right. sent. He was not the um, uh, commander in chief, uh, but he was uh, he was you know uh, leading this you know uh, part of I, Polish I, troops. I think had he also seen service with, under Napoleon as well. Dwernicki, if my memory serves me correctly, he, yeah, he was, an, there, there he, he quite, was an officer. Quite during. a lot of these chaps mm -hmm. had sort of cut their teeth, if you and might. And that's uh, so this, it. Was a very good army. I mean, this this army was uh, composed of of people who, who served under Napoleon, and they were very very well trained men. Well, they'd have taken part in some major in some major military, in the, in the latest major European military war, so yeah. they'd be highly skilled. Um, and, and that battle, I think, was, as you say, you call it a skirmish, um, relatively uh, inconclusive. Um, I mean, a, Pol a Polish victory, but not sufficiently a victory to sort of... It didn't stop the Russian army. Stop the Russian army. and welcome to another edition of Poland Daily Travel. It's fantastic. In these series of episodes, we're going to be taking a special walk in Warsaw. We're going to be looking at the sumptuous and scintillating gardens at the palace by the Vistula. That's right, we'll be taking a walk between the palace and the river. That's the royal palace, of course. Not only a beautiful building, but beautiful gardens as well and Old Man Vistula rolling by. We're going to take a walk in the remade gardens and talk some old rubbish and see where the old river crossing was. You will be just as amazed as I was, along with Stan. Later, we'll walk along the Vistula, along what is called the Vistula Boulevards, which sports, according to many publications, the best beaches of any big city in all of Europe. We'll let you be the judge of that. So come along for a special walk between the palace and the river. That's Poland Daily Travel. We're in Warsaw. What better place to be? Let's go for a stroll. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Poland Daily Travel. We're doing it guerrilla style today. We're in the streets. We're escaping from the jungle. It's not a jungle. I don't know why I said that. It's a labyrinth, isn't it? Is it is. It's a labyrinth in which we met each other. I feel like uh, I feel like Dr. Livingston. You're Dr. Livingston, and I'm the other guy, Stanley. Yeah. But you're Stanley. I'm Stanley. So, it so makes it's no confusing. Sense. Yeah. It is confusing because it should be the other way around. But we're I not should a be Dr. Livingston. We're not a philosophy program, so. Uh, philosophy. I guess, uh, philosophical. Sorry. Who is that? You know, I, I make some mistakes once in no, a while. No, 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 that's not, that's not a mistake. Philosophy? Phil philosophy? This is like a friend of mine. Really? Yeah, I thought you were saying Phil is something. Oh, Phil is Zofie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Offie. Well, I was like, it's what? It's the gender thing? He's off again? Phil is Zofie. Nah, yeah, exactly. Zofie, yeah, yeah, sorry. Weird, weird, sorry, guys. Weird. weird. No, no, it's okay. You're doing fine. Um, 
At any rate, no, they were. He, uh, they met in the jungle, and he goes, ah, Dr. Livingston, I presume. Yeah. You know that story? Unfortunately, you know no, that story? I'm not Virginian. It was enough. a great, <laughs> you don't have to be. They, they were English. <laughs> they were English, but I'm not Dr. English Livingston too. was in the jungle. And uh, Dr. Stanley was a, oh. Henry Stanley was a journalist, and he went searching for Livingston in the middle of the jungle. Oh, yeah, but Livingston. And when he met him, he goes, after all this line, over, you know, over, you know, everything, uh, waterfalls and long rivers and crocodiles, crocodiles and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tarzan is uh, yeah, yeah. chasing him as well. I yeah. don't know why. But, uh, Tarzan is not the son of Dr. Livingstone? No, no, no they we're not really. In the jungle? No, this is the different because guy. Because Tarzan is Mowgli too, right? Are, are these the same guys? Great Googly Mowgli. Great good question. <laughs> Great Googly Mowgli. I have no idea what we're talking about now. But anyway, <laughs> we need to walk up and see what? The upper garden? Yeah. Yas. Okay. Yeah. Let's so go. There are, Let's go see there's, it. We're in the lower gardens. Yeah. There's the labyrinth behind us. Uh, you want to tell me something about the lower gardens before we yeah, continue? Yeah, I could. I mean, just a brief history. I'm not, at any case, any case, in any case, an expert on it. I talk just, to me, not the camera. Yeah, sorry. The sorry, camera's guys. not a person. I know. I know. Yeah. But talk to me. No, there. I'm there here. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. I'm here. The, okay. you know, there's no people. Okay. They're right, only our right. crew. Okay. Talk to me. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come yes. Okay, good. Yeah, now let's talk do it. To me. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, okay, go. <laughs> um, so, the gardens, there were some gardens from the ducal times, which yeah. is the late Middle Ages. We don't know where they were exactly, but one thing is for sure they were on the escarpment. Because okay. here, where we're standing right now, the river used to be up here. Yeah. 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 Used to and behind around. us, there's the Ar uh, Kubitsky arcades, which were very interesting. Uh, we'll, the camera will show them in a second. Yeah. Uh, they were a very interesting project because since the riverbank was just there, uh -huh. uh, so we're merchants, in the river. Yeah, we're in the river back yeah. then until, really until the end yeah. of the 18th century. This is the river Amazing. here, and uh, this was partially yes, and this was partially uh, dried because the king, the last king of Poland, Stanislaw Augustus, wanted yeah. to have a garden as he used to have one. Uh -huh. uh, there used to be gardens uh, uh, upper in the upper garden some sort of form in Italian style, French style. Uh -huh. And, uh, and so, so he dried it, but just partially. And then Poland collapsed, unfortunately, at the end of the 18th century. And it was over. Yeah. And it was over. But then yeah. during the Kingdom of Poland, which was a semi-autonomous uh, country, a rump state, which was under uh, Russian control. A rump steak? No, a rump state. I know. Because I'm a little bit hungry. States. I know, I, I know. I, I just ate, so I don't oh, have you this ate. kind You're of not, association. I'm hungry. My stomach is but growling. Anyways, don't. we're going to eat something. Don't worry. Okay, we'll have something nice. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Are you going to sing? Yeah. Good. Uh, and so, uh, cut. No. <laughs> and just kidding. So, uh, yeah. so the project was postponed, but then during this Kingdom of Poland, which was uh, the product of the Congress of Vienna after 1815, uh, some architect tried to continue the work of the king. And so this was built because this actually is not just a, a storage place. It used to be a street, an underground, let's say a caved street, because they wanted to have the upper gardens and mm -hmm. the lower gardens. But mm -hmm. there was a street running here, traditionally, mm -hmm. where the merchants would co come oh, with cool. their- right beside the yeah, river. Yeah, exactly, because there was the- So there it was came the right up. The point is that they were trading in this arcade. Yeah right below the castle yes. where the river ended. Yes. So they could bring their boats right up here. To get rid of yeah. them That's the point, as, right? as a problem uh -huh. for the, the establishment of the gardens. Right. So they just, they just, uh, they just built, uh, built this thing, uh, let's say, over the street. Right. So this is rather a tunnel or uh, some Super. kind of a early bridge. It's actually very, very uh, interesting in terms of Maybe architecture. Maybe we should, can we go inside? Uh, we could shot it. I mean, it's not is that there, fascinating. There's nothing to see today because there's no big thing going. No, no, no. It's no, mostly no. for big events, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But I okay. think it's much more interesting to go okay. up. Okay. Well, then let's go to the garden. Let me cut you off now. We, yeah, yeah, of because, course, of course. Uh, and we'll start uh, no the problem. next segment. Yes. There. Okay. Yes. Very right. good. Good. Stay with us. Poland Daily Travel. Ciao. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We're going up the stairs now to see what the upper garden. Yeah, the upper garden. Okay, and we're let's going go. to tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. So, come on, yeah. come on, come on. And so, uh, see those stairs? Have you noticed that they are uh, the shape of it is not very, very, uh, I mean, very uh, classical. Right. I didn't well, notice that because I don't. I'm not. 
You're blind? No, you're not. No, I'm not so great on classical yeah. stairs. They're okay, very so, so substantial. Yeah. Well, they're very, you know, there's, they're, they're built on an angle. Yeah, they're built on an angle? Yes, and that's because they were also suited for horse. What, if a horse were, could walk yeah, up here? Yeah, of course, of course. Because listen, as I told you, here, down there, there was the river. Yeah. Up until the end of the 18th century. Right. And so here, it was the bank of the river and that's where the merchants would that's come wild. and sell. That's yeah. wild, the river was right here. Yeah, well, right here. It's so here. much bigger than it is now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the river was pushed around 200 meters yeah. in front of was us. Was it still the same size on the other bank or? I don't know. Do we know? We I, don't I, know. Think, I think it was probably slightly to uh More to this to size. Yeah, but, yeah. I, that, but that wider, I'm not sure. no doubt. Yeah. Probably wider, yeah. probably. But wow. anyways, um, so, so in order to Terrific. accommodate uh, the merchants and to be able to build the garden, since there was a busy, busy street, mm -hmm. they decided to build this kind of a, arc, the, those arcades because people. Could, it was actually a street, just a, a street covered by a building, mm -hmm. and so they could build the top of it, the garden, mm -hmm. and let people walk through uh, from one part of the garden to the other without disturbing people that were walking through the street. Interesting. Which, and, okay. and of course, I guess there were some uh, shops or merchants things. They probably extinguished, they stopped selling things here since probably. So this is a real market, it's like a well, active market it, all it along was, here. Let's on the say edge it, of the, was, it was, a, the, it was right a, on the river sort bank. of a port. Would it, could, weren't they worried it would undermine the foundation of the castle? The river being so close, it's extraordinary no, to me. Actually, they built actually, it right here. Actually, no, it never happened. I mean, Remember, this is an escarpment, right? It's 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 thousands of years old. Yeah, it's and been the, here the city, forever. Yeah. yeah, and the city was built on top of it. It does produce some problems uh, from sometimes because when the when the there are landslides, right? Yeah, uh, sure. And uh, and that has to be the, the building. Sometimes I know I used to sing in this cathedral back back there, and we had rehearsal at the tower, and we knew from architectural from guys, for engineers and stuff, they were saying that they have to plug special uh, bars like they have to fill uh, the ground with uh, some sort of concrete in order to fortify the ground because otherwise it's all it's slipping. Yeah, that's what I this, thought. Yeah, subsision. Yeah. yeah, but now I think with those arcades, <laughs> no no problem. Yeah, as such. But uh, I was just saying this because uh, it gives you the reason for this staircase, and it also it's accommodated to to help. I mean, to uh, allow uh, uh, horses to walk through here. So it was just like a passage from one garden to another in order to uh, to let the let's say the, the 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 busy street that used to be here to run wow along the river maybe we can get some shots of the busy street from paintings or something yeah. okay poland daily travel join us for the next exciting segment from the gardens of the royal palace in warsaw in beautiful downtown warsaw stay with us and uh, what, that's with me and Stan. Stan Yaglinski right here. Yes. Stan knows me. a lot. You know a lot about this stuff. Stay with us, folks. Yeah, come on.